Russia has regained much of its ability to project power abroad, but 12 nations in East Europe are designing a deterrence. The initiative, known as the Three Seas, would create a containment belt that stretches along the Adriatic Sea, the Baltic Sea and the Black Sea. The ultimate objective is to prevent Russia from further encroaching on Eastern Europe. So let's see how the Europeans plan to checkmate Russia. I'm your host Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Today's episode is made possible by Raid Shadow Legends, a turn-based RPG with millions of players across the world. What I like about the game is that you can either team up with others, play within clans or go solo and fight everyone. And now the highly anticipated battle pass on Season 1 is live and you can win awesome rewards including free energy refills, gems, upgraded artifact sets and new epic and legendary champions by fulfilling the daily and weekly challenges. If you like strategy games but want the comforts of mobile gaming, try Raid Shadow Legends. Go to the video description, click on the special links and if you are a new player you will get 100,000 silver plus one free champion Yuton. All these treasures will be waiting for you here. The rewards will be available only for the next 30 days and only for new players. Now back to our report at hand. Launched in 2015 by Croatian and Polish policymakers, the Three Seas Initiative seeks to create a political platform by promoting interconnectivity on energy, infrastructure and digitalization projects in Central and East Europe. The initiative gets its name from the three seas that border the region and the participating nations are Poland, Romania, Austria, Bulgaria, Croatia, Hungary, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Slovakia, Slovenia and the Czech Republic. On paper, the three seas initiative is an economic project. It aims to facilitate a commercial corridor from north to south. Since the 1950s, most infrastructure interconnections in East Europe focused along the east-west axis. During the Cold War, the east-west pipelines, highways, railways served as Soviet tools of submission and control. Even today, much of the infrastructure flows primarily from west to east which is a telling sign that Eastern Europe still relies on Russia for much of its needs. The Three Seas Initiative aims to rectify that relationship by developing energy, transportation and infrastructure projects along the north-south axis. For the member states of the initiative, the Three Seas is a revolutionary geopolitical undertaking. So let's dissect it. In the sphere of energy, the initiative seeks to link the new liquefied natural gas terminals in Poland with those in Lithuania and further construct new LNG terminals in Croatia. In addition, the Three Seas seeks to connect Romania's hydrocarbon reserves to the larger periphery, possibly even linking with the Trans-Adriatic pipeline in Greece and Italy. Connecting all these new sources of hydrocarbons would reduce the need for Russian gas imports across Eastern Europe. Transportation-wise, the Three Seas Initiative highlights the need for new north to south highway connections, as well as the need to enhance existing railways between the countries in the region. There is even mention of connecting the water corridors between the Danube, Oder and Elbe rivers. On the digital front, the initiative includes a new telecommunications platform to improve trade, research and link the region through fiber optics and 5G technology. On the whole, the participating nations have agreed to no less than 48 mega projects, and the Three Seas Initiative Investment Fund was explicitly brought to life to finance these projects. The fund has a total value of 100 billion euros, a good start, but to finance all the projects envisioned by the initiative would require roughly 570 billion euros. Now, the Three Seas Initiative Investment Fund could seek for other sources of financing, think of the European Investment Bank and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, but the lack of funding will remain a serious problem meaning the Three Seas Initiative needs an external patron for both financial and political backing. It just so happens that the United States has thrown in its political weight behind the initiative. 
In February 2020, the State Department pledged a billion dollars in financing for the Three Seas Initiative Investment Fund, an amount that could surge depending on its political evolution. The second patron for the Three Seas Initiative is Germany, which has interests to the east and west of its borders. Lawmakers in Berlin have expressed an interest in joining the initiative and German participation would bring to the table the financial resources that are so desperately needed. However, Germany would also immediately dominate the agenda of the Three Seas Initiative since it is the most significant GDP contributor, sort of like how Germany dominates the agenda of the European Union. Thus, partnership with Washington is favored over Berlin for that reason. Either way, on the surface, the Three Seas Initiative seems like an authentic economic platform. But much like China's Belt and Road, the European plan has a geopolitical undertone. The Three Seas Initiative will not only empower your people to prosper, but it will ensure that your nations remain sovereign, secure, and free from foreign coercion. The Three Seas Nations will stand stronger than they ever have stood before. It's no secret that for Eastern Europe, the downfall of the USSR and the joining of the European Union and NATO was a sign of relief. At the time, fears over Russian expansionism were put on hold, while pro-European narratives flourished. The last decade, however, has shown that the historical revision was short-lived. The Kremlin has regained much of its ability to project power abroad in hard and soft power capacities. The Georgian War in 2008, the annexation of Crimea in 2014, and the ongoing conflict in Donbass are examples of Russian hard power projections, while the Gazprom monopoly in natural gas and the status of ethnic Russian minorities is an example of Moscow's soft power. Either way, the Kremlin's resurgence is forcing the nations in the vicinity to re-evaluate their geopolitical options concerning Russia, especially since Moscow's geopolitical objective in East Europe is to push westward as far as possible. None of the East European governments want to return to Russian servitude, which is why many think tanks, lawmakers and business tycoons in the East consider Russia as a long-term threat. Fears over Russian belligerence do not exclusively stem from a land invasion, but also in the sphere of cyber attacks, disinformation and overall support for subversive domestic groups. The concern today is that Russia will use its soft and hard power assets to destabilize the East European nations and hijack their foreign policies. That cannot be allowed to happen. So the geopolitical motive of the Three Seas Initiative is to form a belt around Russia's frontier with the European Peninsula and thereby block Russia from moving west. This is a shared geopolitical interest among the East Europeans and the commercial projects that are currently being propagated are merely the first stepping stones towards that objective. Another consideration is Turkey. A little more than a century ago, Turkish power projection reached well into the Balkans. Modern Turkey, much like modern Russia, seeks to revive its historical role. Seen in this light, the Three Seas Initiative would block Turkish influence as much as Russian influence, but the primary objective remains the latter. What's interesting is that the scale of the Three Seas Initiative somewhat matches the historical inter Mariam concept designed by Polish statesman Józef Piłsudski. For most of recorded history, the flat terrain of East Europe turned the area into a battle space for great powers. For centuries, the Austrians, Russians, Ottomans and Polish battled against one another. But regardless who emerged victoriously, the smaller indigenous nations lost either way. The inter Mariam was meant to put an end to that. In the 20th century, as the Russian Empire collapsed, Poland regained its independence. Polish lawmakers, led by Pulsudski, immediately started campaigning for the inter Mariam, a massive confederation of East European nations. At its core, the inter Mariam resembled the old Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and had it succeeded, it would have changed history forever. Even though Pulsudski's plan ultimately failed, his idea shares much with the current geopolitical project. In fact, Intermarium means between seas, a 
terminology that is close to the three C's initiative. So one can argue that the three C's initiative is a revival of the intermarium, though the inclusion of the Baltic and Balkan regions changes the nature of the initiative from its predecessor. Either way, each of the participating nations has its own interests to consider. The countries of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia lack strategic depth. Developing international alliances and reaching out to external patrons is essential to their geopolitical needs. NATO and EU membership will remain the cornerstone of their foreign policies and keeping the United States engaged in the region will still be the primary focus. However, recent frictions within NATO and the political fragmentation of the EU pose severe threats to the Baltic nations. The Three Seas Initiative offers a platform to develop alternative political, economic and eventually military ties, all of which are desperately needed for the Baltics. Further south, Poland and Romania sit at the heart of the initiative. Both nations consider their relationship with the EU, NATO and the United States as the backbone of their foreign policies. Both nations also have distinct grievances with the Russians. Poland considers the territories to the east of its borders, and in particular Belarus and Ukraine, as a buffer zone with the Russian Federation. Romania, meanwhile, seeks reunification with Moldova, which clashes with Russia's objective of maintaining buffer space. Hence, since the collapse of the Soviet Union, Polish and Romanian policymakers have cooperated closely with each other and with Western institutions. The trouble, however, is that the European Union and the West European allies of NATO lack the political appetite to compete with Russia. So it is left to Poland and Romania to carve out their own policy, of which the Three Seas Initiative is the result. Still south, the initiative enters the domain of the Balkans. And here, things become ever more complicated because old fault lines are triggered. By adding Slovenia and Croatia to its ranks, the initiative immediately alarms Serbia, the region's largest power. Croatia and Serbia have fought on many occasions, most recently in the 1990s. Plus, Serbia maintains close ties with Russia and will not want to take any steps that harm that special relationship. So right off the bat, Serbia is likely to oppose the Three Seas Initiative. However, since Serbia is a landlocked nation and has no direct access to the Russian mainland, it must seek for other allies. That alternative ally is Turkey, which is also keen on expanding its influence into the Balkans. The dance between Serbia, Russia and Turkey could eventually unravel the Three Seas Initiative. At the very least, the geopolitical fault lines in the Balkans would pose a drain on resources and possibly even defeat the purpose of the Three Seas Initiative. Unless somehow Serbia is brought into the fold, the forces of geopolitics would work against the plan. For now, the concept of the Three Seas is a vehicle for regional cooperation. Focusing on infrastructure along the north-south axis of Eastern Europe offers strong economic incentives for the nations to partake in the projects. The Three Seas concept is not an alliance as of yet, but as in any multinational institution, it is meant to evolve over time. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. If you enjoyed this report, leave a like, comment or reaction for the algorithm. Thank you for watching and so on.